it's like crazy just to think how early you were on basically monetizing being a hot chick in hip hop. It's very <laughs> much like an established thing now. There's a model for girls to follow if they want to get into this game and stuff, but you finesse the system way before almost anybody else had figured it out, right? Well, I, I consider myself like the last video vixen of the that was able to do things that some of the girls that were, you know, doing it back in the day did. Mm. So I was like the last one. And then I have been able to kind of transition into all the social media craziness and, you know, all that stuff. So, so I'm kind of like in between. I, I, I'm like the old school and I'm somehow being able to still do some of like the new stuff. Right. Well, what was it like before you and what was it like after you in terms of like sort of how that, that game changed? Well, the whole game has changed, especially mm. for, for video girls, mm. video models. Like there's no magazines anymore. Mm. So I was one of the last ones to actually do all the covers of like the big magazines back in the day. Mm. That's true, um, yeah. There's still some music videos uh, happening, but, you know, labels are not putting that much money into them. The mm. budgets are not the same. So because of that, you know, they don't pay what they used to pay back in the day. So right. and, and a lot of people are just like doing things like for free. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> so it, some people have fucked up the game. Yeah. You know, and you know, it's weird to think about like back in the day, there was just a lot less rap videos in general being made, I guess. And now it's like everybody is making rap videos and just putting them on world star or whatever. And it's, there's, there's a million like somewhat high profile or like, I don't know how high the profile is per se, but there's just so many videos. Like I, I watch videos all the time where it's like the same four girls in LA who just <laughs> apparently have pretty good connections are just able to like get in there and just do these music videos. And I have no idea how much they're getting paid. It's probably not that much, but they're just out I'm here. I'm pretty sure there's not that much. <laughs> yeah. You know, but they're out here and like in their head, they're probably like every time they get a shout out from some rapper or whatever, and they get a couple thousand followers, that's their way of building up in the game i can't relate <laughs> i need that that budget <laughs> mm, respect yeah that's real <laughs> talk about how you got in the game in general though like what what when did you get discovered or noticed for the first time well uh, when i was living in dominican republic that's where i'm born uh, i'm from i'm born and raised in dominican republic i mm. used to uh, when i was 18 years old i became um the youngest soloist member of the Ballet Nacional Dominicano, which was the only classical company at the time in my country. I saw you with Emily Oberg and you were standing on your fucking toes and it looked so yes. crazy. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> we do that. Mm, you do. So I, I danced there professionally for four years and I quit when I came to the United States. Mm. And I had some pictures on my MySpace back in the day when there was not Instagram yet. Mm. I had stuff on my MySpace and somebody contacted me and say, hey, I, will, I have a website where I showcase beautiful girls like, like you that are very flexible and it's non-nudity, like they were paying very well. And I, I did a little video for him. He put a teaser of that video on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I knew, this thing had millions of views, like within the next like couple of weeks. And from there, I started getting calls from a lot of artists to be in their videos and in magazines to be in the covers. And so, so you went viral before there was like a real clear understanding of what it was to go viral. Because now if you have a little viral video clip of a hot girl or whatever, it might end up on the world star, Instagram, academics, no jumper, complex, a million different things. Buzzfeed's gonna write an article about it. Who was the girl that was in this viral video? You know, it's like there's such a established way that that happens now, but you were kind of early on that wave of something just sort of going viral off of a girl just creating an interesting visual. Well, I think before that happened to me, there was a lot, a couple of artists, like, for example, I believe that, like, Soldier Boy, he was a, a product of, like, YouTube. Right. So that was the same thing with me. The difference is that I personally didn't put the video on YouTube. Mm. Um, the guy that owned the video just put a, a teaser because he wanted people to come to his website. Right. So I ended up just getting, you know, a lot of interest and attention after that and people used to call me like you are on tmc or mto and i was like what is that right i didn't know anything about the blogs or any of that 
any of those things. But I'm really happy that everything, <laughs> you know, happened the way it did. How did you start? Well, I saw another interview with you where you said that there are millions of Rosa Acostas who walk around barefoot in your country. Do you really believe <laughs> yeah. that? Is, is your beauty average where you come from? You honestly think that? Yeah, I really? think that, yes. I, I, I got to go out there. I believe that, well, I, first of all, I am a huge fan of um, female beauty. Mm. And sometimes I see women that some men might not consider cute, but to me, they are. Mm. And I also can see, I just see beauty in like almost every female. Mm. <laughs> So you can but call you're me. Not, is you can call me thirsty if you want to. <laughs> but do, you you previously dated women, right? Yes, I have. But does I just, that not happen anymore for you? Yes, yes, it happens. But it I just okay. I just love women. I love the beauty of all of us. So I do believe that, like you know, there's women like me and more beautiful than me, just walking around everywhere in Dominican but, Republic. But, okay, just my assumption is that if that were really true, then porn directors or photographers and stuff would be going out there and just, like, trying to convince every girl they see because you're out here making, you know, way more money at a certain point than the average attractive woman. It's like, why wouldn't they just go there and find those girls? It feels like there has to be something special about you that you're just trying to be humble and deny for oh, me. No, 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 <laughs> but... I, I believe there is something special about me, but mm. it doesn't necessarily is my uh, physical appearance. Because you have the confidence. That's kind of a problem I would think for a lot of girls who maybe just don't know what the hell is going on in the world. Is like, yeah, maybe they're really pretty, but they just don't have like the attitude that's going to sort of draw people in. Is that true? I don't know. All I, can, I don't know about the other girls. All I can tell you is that I am thankful for my looks and I, you know, I'm able to monetize from them. But if I didn't have them, I will still be that bitch. I will still be making that money. <laughs> you think so? Absolutely. What would you be doing? Selling crack? Maybe. Mm. Chapo, call me. <laughs> <laughs> no, his, whole, his, his whole operation is locked up. Or no, didn't the son get out? Do you know? Are you locked in with the cartels? Chapo, son. It's my stepson. Please give me a call. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get in touch. <laughs> call me. That'd be cool for me if I got an El Chapo interview. That would be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool is one way of saying it. Holy shit, a chair just fell out. Laura, what are you doing? I didn't even know Laura was here. I guess I did. I saw when I walked out. Uh, all right. Thank God we weren't talking about Pablo Escobar. If we were and that happened, I would have think that was his ghost. Really? So you believe in ghosts like that? Yes. I got to get do. on your level. I do. Damn. I had a ghost living in my house a while ago. What was he doing? Um, playing with my dog. And um, like I have a hammock and she was like rocking it. Wow. Yeah. And also she would like, um, she did little things like where she moved stuff around. Mm. Wow. That's cool. Man, my house seems so boring when I think about the fact that there's like almost no ghosts in there or probably none. Well, the good thing about that is that you're not paying rent for anybody. You're not supporting anybody's, you know, living. I, I felt like I was, you know, I'm already feeling some type of way about my dog not collaborating with like some cash right so you feel like you felt like the <laughs> landlord to the ghost <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> wow pretty much <laughs> a lot of responsibility i never thought about the responsibility of taking care of the ghost yeah i mean i had to keep the lights on so they could like turn the switch on and off wow because if i don't pay the light bill then when they switch it on and off there's nothing happening so they cannot scare me mm, there you go it's but a lot a lot goes do you believe <laughs> you in any sort of like supernatural way that you get rid of the ghost? Do you have to like go in there and burn some shit, some sage? Isn't that what they're doing? She was a friendly ghost. Oh. Yeah. She was a friendly ghost. I would think it would be almost like a waste of my afterlife if I became a ghost and then I just went and like played with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I would love playing with the, dogs are pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be mad if I, if you know, I much rather play with dogs and not with like stupid people. Do you think so. that if that there are like evil ghosts that are doing fucked up shit to people, like punishing them? Because I feel like that's how I'd want to. I would want to come back and I would want to like torture someone who did me wrong prior in my life. Why not doing? Why not fucking them up in in this life? Why well, you gotta pussy. wait? I don't want to confront them. I don't even know who <laughs> we're talking about, but I don't want to confront them for sure. No, let's just do whatever we gotta do. Let's do it now. Come back as a ghost and then take the shoelaces out of their shoes when they're asleep and no time together so they trip mm. no i was 
thinking about more like choking them or like putting the pillow on their faces. No. Can a ghost murder? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't want to come back if I cannot do that, oh. especially if I'm trying to get revenge. Well, what stops you from killing people in your day to day life? Basically, the, the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really nice of you to come from the Dominican Republic and then respect our laws that I guess are probably roughly the same as the Dominican Republic just can't kill people. It kind of sucks. It sort of limits your freedom, you know. Sucks, I know. Mm. Especially like if they did you wrong, like you should be it should be legal. Right. Damn. Finally found somebody that just thinks like me. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad we met. <laughs> so did you uh do you feel like you got taken advantage of in any way when you first started to get into the game? Because you didn't know the game at all. Were there like all kinds of shady people that were trying to get you to sign shitty contracts? You got all kinds of weird pimps trying to get you to sign contracts to manage <laughs> you and shit like that? Uh, no, I do regret not having the team that I have now back mm. in the day. But I mean I have, I didn't know them. Mm. So um in general, I will say that I had a lot of people around me that had good intentions, but not the right mindset or the connections to actually like help me get to where I wanted to be even faster. Mm. But I- I've been pretty lucky. And I mean, I've been working with the team that I have now for like most of my career. Mm. So like we're about to go in on like 10 years. And so, yeah, I'm like, I think like only like, The first year I was kind of like with the first year or two, I had a manager that had great intentions, but just didn't have what it take, Mm. you know? And then from there, I just, my whole team just fell into place. Yeah. And we've been rocking since then. Shout out to them. Did you, um, so not only are you getting like a million offers work-wise, well, yeah, you start getting all these offers in terms of like things you can do for jobs and stuff. What did you actually really start focusing on? Because there's probably all kinds of different offers and you didn't really know exactly which ones you should pursue. All of them. I don't want to leave one dollar on the table mm. for anybody. Right. I'm taking all the money. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what were you doing? Like club hostings, photo shoots, videos? Everything, yes. Right. I, I have my own clothing store. It's called Cosa Mia. And I on also Melrose, have, right? Well, we were on Melrose for three years. Right. We're online only now. Okay. And um, I have my I have a fragrance. So I have like, you know, I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm going to sell you everything. Right. You got to be able to create products around yourself, not just, you know, sort of marketing your likeness, right? Right. And I mean, I... I have, like I have, you know, Cosamia is one of my brands. Uh, I love what Cosamia stands for because it's, I basically have put together all my favorite designers or like up and coming designers, right? And we started working together. So it was like a virtual mall for people to, instead of like going to buy from this girl and this girl and this girl and pay a separate shipping on each website, they could just come to mine and buy everything all together Mm. and potentially, you know, waiving the whole like shipping process, like getting some, you know, deals by shopping from different brands. And all the girls, they all are, you know, entrepreneurs, designers, they make their own stuff from scratch. Uh So when you're supporting the brands that I have on Cosa Mia, you are supporting like, it's, it's like female power. You are supporting like girls that are talented, small business, Mm. minorities. See, that's really interesting you say that because I've seen that with my girlfriend with her blowing up on Instagram over the past couple of years where it's you have all of these dudes who realistically are the ones who are paying your bills because they're the ones who are, for in her case, paying for the private Snapchat. They're the ones who are like watching the videos, who are following you on all these platforms and everything. But at the end of the day, that's one type of fandom because they're really just a bunch of hornballs. But then you also make all these girl fans along the way and like that's kind of a different relationship because you probably if you're like her she sort of cares more about that relationship she has with like the young girls who watch her videos but then at the same time they're two very different markets that you're kind of trying to hit when you're like a famous hot girl yeah i mean i try when i started obviously i started i think people knew me well people knew me because i was flexible mm. you know and so moving and they they thought it was really sexy to me. It was the stuff that I did every day before I took a ballet class. Mm. <laughs> so I didn't think it was any, it, it was like that sexy. It was just like the one thing that I do every day before I take a class. And, you know, I feel like 
because people thought that was sexy, they I, I joined like that industry of like sexy video vixen, you know, and of course I have a huge male following because of that. But then I also started to transition into fitness modeling. This was roughly 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. the, the end of 2009 is when I started um, getting pre 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 preparing myself for a fitness competition. And so since then I started to gain kind of like, you know, the sympathy and like the friendship online of of all these girls right. and then i you know i dip my my toes into like the little fashion and like beauty so i try to keep everybody happy but you did the fitness competition that must have been weird because in the rap video world they would probably prefer that you be a little thicker whereas the fitness world you got to get super low body fat right yes yeah, so, well just for the comp just for the competition but um they usually, well, back in the day, they used to kind of like Photoshop my apps uh -huh. as fitness uh, has become something more like normal and accepted. Now they kind of like glorify them. But um, I I don't think I look like the average video girl. I'm like not really like as thick as like some of the, mm. I don't know, like Buffy the body. Oh, you yeah. know? I mean, especially nowadays, you definitely could see certain rap videos where it's like their type is just girls with ridiculous, huge butts. Like you were, you, you yeah. never, you always had a nice, you were kind of known for having a nice butt to a certain extent, right? But not to that crazy extreme. Yeah, no, not like that. Mm. <laughs> so, but I try to make everybody happy. I try to make the, my female you know, following happy and give them the things that they like. And then I also have like the guys that like to see sexy and ass and tits. Like I got something for everybody. Mm. So follow me at Rosa Acosta. <laughs> <laughs>